Renee, I'm, I'm going to start with you because in, in your video, we saw it with the kids sitting down. Most, most coaching videos, you see them on the field, running fitness, doing drills, and they're at one point in a classroom with you. And I know you've talked a lot about emphasizing the importance of values and life lessons. How do you do that with the kids? How do you get them to buy in? I think the, the biggest challenge in that endeavor is getting kids to realize that everything that happens off the pitch uh, will have a direct influence on what happens on the pitch. Uh, if you talk about relationships, trust, empathy, uh, integrity, those things, if you do it in an explicit way, not just as a byproduct as to what happens on the field, but if you take time to do it off the field and you can kind of connect it directly to what happens on the field, then I think it can have, it can have a huge impact as to you know, whether or not you're successful not only on the field, but off of it. So I think that that's been the biggest uh, challenge for us when we first started coaching. Uh, and I say us because I have, I'm not doing this by myself. Uh, you know, I have the wonderful support of a community that embraces this philosophy. Uh, matter of fact, you know, I got a, lo a lot of people over there on that side of the room that should be commended for all the work they do on a daily basis uh, so that we're successful. Um, but I I'm lucky to work in an environment where people buy in to this philosophy, uh, and I'm very thankful because you know, I consider myself a better man uh, for a having them allow me uh, to instill this philosophy in our program. So. What was their, the players and the parents' initial reaction to this philosophy and idea and approach? Initially, um, I thought parents thought that I was confused because I also teach at, at the school that I coach in. <laughs> Uh, so maybe they thought that I was, you know, trying to do a little overtime in my teaching. But uh, I, I think that sports are co-curricular, and I firmly believe that. I, I think that the field is an extension of the classroom. So for the most part, like I said, uh, the community embraced this philosophy. And I think that uh, that is how I'm sitting here on this stool right now in these bright lights in front of me, <laughs> because uh, I have uh, parents, I have administrators, I have a wonderful AD. Uh, community members and players that buy into this philosophy. Uh, and had I not had that, um, who knows what my coaching would look like today. So, Vanessa, you talk in your video and in, in a lot of the, the nominations that came in and recommendations about how much you're empathizing with players and how much you want to relate to them, both on and off the field. What are some of the biggest challenges you're noticing that players are facing? Well, I work with girls who are between 13 and 18 years old, and I see them getting weaker and weaker, as in ability to stand on their own, to think on their own, to actually speak, to make eye contact, to write a thank you card, to have business skills um, across the board. The communication has gone downhill, and that's why I see problems between players, problems with parents, problems of all sorts. So. Um, we talk about all of it pretty, pretty easily. I'm, I'm lucky that I can get down on their level. I, I have maintained a little bit of my mindful youth, and I'm able to sit down and talk with them in their type of voice, and so they hear that I'm actually listening, and they know that whatever I say, I've got their back. Everything that we talk about is private. It's just between the two of us. I'll give them some advice, some, somewhere between a mother and a favorite aunt, you know, and uh, Luckily, they'll take a lot of times what I say and run with it, and it's a blessing to me. I love to be able to help, and through the weekend things that I do, I try to help with all the other things, like take away phones and force them to actually have conversations while they are in the same No, room. come on. It's crazy talk. Crazy Craziness talk. Craziness over there. Oh, I know. And we have uh, special speakers that come and speak to them about leadership and confidence and how to hold yourself. and. We actually write thank you cards to our special speakers. So I teach them how to write a proper thank you card, not to, no, I Vanessa. love you, number 18. <laughs> you know, um, but it's all these little bitty things. I believe that they add up and they start to snowball. They start to get the idea. And so I force them to make decisions also, rely on themselves, and I'll tell them if they need to do differently, but um, just trying to grow them a little stronger. That's, yeah. a, that's awesome. At our, at our leadership academy we do, we have the kids write notes to themselves, mm -hmm. and we ask them to, to address the envelope. I'm not kidding. 
they don't write to themselves or write letters anymore, so they don't know how to address an envelope. Like, we have to put it on the screen, like, stamp goes here, you know? <laughs> Your name. That's so true. It's crazy. Exactly. So that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> B Bob, you have seemed to unlo have unlocked what I, I think most coaches would agree is probably the biggest challenge, and that is, how do you get a player, after making a mistake, to believe that they can not just carry on, but they can carry on and be successful? How do you, how do, you do it? Um, so, uh, and certainly in Little League, kids make mistakes a lot. Right? It happens all the time, 9, 10, 11 year old kids. Yeah. Um, I remember um, one of the coaches I had in Little League back in Massachusetts when I was a kid, um, and I was a pitcher, and I, I uh, remember giving up a home run one day, and the coach came out to the mound, and he said to me, I, I sure hope you give up hundreds of home runs in your life. And I said, that, that sounds terrible, why? But then you think about that, you know, he wanted me to continue getting better, continue playing, and hopefully play for a long time. So yeah, I, I, I see kids making mistakes, but I also see the things that they're doing well. So I, I want to bring them, you know, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, say, these are the two things you did well. Let's work on this third thing here. The next time you play, maybe you'll do three things well and, and develop that way. So give me an example. OK, I like it. Give me an example. If you're walking out to the mound, or you're nope. in the dugout, Right? How would that conversation carry on? Uh, so I go out to the mound and, and somebody's struggling, an you know, 11 year old kid hasn't thrown a strike in a couple of minutes. And I'd go out and I'd remind him that last Thursday when we had our one on one session in the bullpen, you threw seven in a row. Remember that? You threw seven strikes in a row. You can do that. And he says, oh, I'm struggling. I said, You're the same kid. Last week you threw seven in a row. Let's go do it again. And the kids, I mean, Kids often get down on themselves, especially young kids. They need to be reminded that they're good, that they, they do things well. And oftentimes that, that'll click and the kid will get, will get better. That's great. That's awesome. Chris, you are a football coach, of course, and are in a world where these men, the traditional sport of football, is about playing hard and playing tough. And yet you talk to your kids a lot about showing compassion and showing emotion. And I have a five-year-old son, so I, I, I know how these, these boys are wired. It's like, no, but mom, I just want to rip his head off. Right. Right? Right. So how do you balance the two with football? Uh, I, I would say when, first of all, I'm the biggest, but I'm pro I don't know why I'm the, always nervous for being so big, but <laughs> the, uh, I, I would say my goal, my goal in coaching is, is not to win the games, is to make the kid not to make the kid anything, but to help him develop. And I, and I, I coach all men's sport. I coach um, football, wrestling, and, and tennis. And it's all, um, every single one, I, I look at it like my job, my, my gift is to work with the kids that was given to me. And it's my job to build them, to build their ego, to each individual player the best you can. So, and, and to coach every kid on the team. So. Um, and it's not just about the game. It's not, it, each of those sports is so different, but it's all, it's all the same as trying to develop a young man. And um, for instance, when I, when I was, my wife and I uh, were getting on the, getting ready to go, uh, my son hadn't given me a kiss in the morning and he was off to the weight room at six o'clock. And uh, so I went in. I went into the school and my wife's like, we well, have to hurry up, we're, we're gonna miss the plane. And, <laughs> but I thought it was more important that I went in and saw my son and gave him a big hug and a kiss in front of all his teammates. And, and I think, <laughs> but I, I think men. Um, How'd he do with that, by the way? He did great. And, and uh, he, he didn't like it, and I'm sure I'm gonna hear about it later. But, but I think uh, with my father's generation and, and being so, um, so loving as my father was, but he, he didn't, he wasn't physical. And now showing the boys, I think that's important for, especially in the sports that I coach, the, the men need to learn how to love and to be kind and compassionate. Is there a resistance to it, however, though? Um, thank you. I, I think there is not only not a resistance, I think it's opposite. I think they're sponges and they, need that touch. They need to, you know, as a, as a school teacher that, you know, you, you gotta be careful, you can't do this, you can't do that. I, baloney. I hug my kids all the time. Um, and, and that's the way I do it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, 
and just, just try to do, teach it through love. I love that. Yep. Neat. Really neat. <laughs> okay, we're going to do a speed round. Are you guys ready for it? Ready. Let's go. Bring it, okay? First one, we'll start with you, Renee. What do you know now that you wish you had known when you started coaching? <laughs> that it is okay for a 14-year-old boy to look at another 14-year-old boy and say, I love you, and mean it. Wow. <laughs> Vanessa, did you bring those Kleenex on stage, by the way? Oh, <laughs> don't make me cry again. <laughs> Vanessa, your turn. Same oh, question. I, oh, what did I wish? Um, to, well, not to, to organize parents way before you organize the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but Positive Parenting Alliance? <laughs> well, yes. Now Jim, I have, have you any... started that yet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bob? I think I, I realize now that uh, sports is a great way to build community, and in Little League especially, when all the kids from the t different teams that go to the same schools together, they've really built a nice um, sort of community feel, both during and after the games, and uh, so I, I didn't expect that going in, and so mm -hmm. that's been a nice thing to realize. Neat. Chris? Uh, I'm going to say how, how important coaching is as in general. Um, it's not... You know, you're coaching the football team. It's not about coaching the football team. It's about developing young men. Uh, we have, I'm sure, many first-time parent coaches here in the audience. And what they find, I'm also sure, is it's a lot harder than they think, right? So what can you tell them, a little bit of advice, that may help them as they, as they jump into this, this big, brave world of coaching? Yes, Renee, we'll start with you. Encourage your kids to be self-advocates. Uh, sports, especially in the high school level, uh, bring a lot of opportunities for your children to speak up for themselves uh, and to embrace responsibility, what their status is, what their role is on a team. So encourage your kids to be self-advocates and don't be so quick to hold their hand. Um, I think that, that that's a great opportunity for high school athletes to kind of take advantage of in sports, all sports. Yep. Vanessa, do you want to add? I would say if you are going to take the position of coach, you need to understand that it's a great honor. Do not step into it. Do not take that on. Do not hold that position unless you are willing to commit all of your love, all of your dedication, all of your resources, all of your humor, your patience, your feet. Um, all of it, if you leave any practice or match not exhausted, you are not doing it properly. <laughs> you can be fulfilled in your heart with the joyful things and the joyful growth that you see, but do not get into it thinking you can show up at a court, bark a few orders, and go home and eat dinner. <laughs> I think I would say, um, you know, when you first sign up and you see 12 kids there expecting you to say something important, it's, it's sort of overwhelming. So I, I think try to find, especially early on, try to find time to work with each kid individually and get to know that kid a little bit more, sort of talk to them about maybe a couple things that you can work on with them. Um, so then later in the season when you get into a game, you feel like you have a personal connection with each kid. You're not just yelling instructions to your team. They have sort of, you say a couple phrases to one kid and he understands what you mean. And that, if, if, that, if, that's, if that's true all the way across the board, I think it's uh, uh, much easier to coach the whole team. I would, I would say to, as a young coach, my, probably my biggest problem, and I would say most, most people that are getting into uh, coaching as parents, would be other parents' comments and such. And I, I wouldn't, uh, I don't necessarily seek out parents to, to give me advice, but when they do, which is, which is all the time, uh, <laughs> I'd embrace that, and with the knowledge that uh, a coach before me told me, and this really, really helped, was that the, the parents love their kids so much, they have a skewed view of, of what's going on. And if you, can, if you can understand that when you're dealing with the parent, that that can make you as a, a better coach because there's, you, I'm sure you're gonna find a, a nugget of gold in everything that they're saying, even, even though they might be upset. If you work with them, it's gonna be okay. Right. 
You know what's it's really interesting too is all of you have touched upon the fact of getting to know the kid, right? Of reaching out, of hugging them, of showing them how much you care. And it's interesting from my perspective as a player for so many years because I think a lot of things coaches struggle with is that balance. And I had always heard like, oh no, you know, there's this coach player line that's drawn and, and I get it, right? But I also think it's important because I think sometimes coaches tend to stay too far away and, and, and think, I don't, I don't want to reach over that line. And um, so I commend you for having the courage to do that because I, I know a lot of people don't. Uh, and for impacting as many lives as, as you had in, in your short coaching careers, longer coaching careers, hopefully for, for many years and decades to come. Thank you so much. And one last important comment before uh, I, I, I let them go is that one of the things Tina Sire said to me tonight is she said, you know, these coaches, when we nominate them and, and we honor them for these awards, it's really interesting because they, they don't want to be recognized, right? They're so humble in what they do and so modest about what they do that they're embarrassed so much by it, almost by it. And I, I found that so interesting and so wonderful because it just shows how much they care. And the most important thing, I think, in what they do is that others see how they do it. So thank you for taking the time to share some wisdom with us tonight and, um, and, and impact as many lives as, as you had. Thank you. Thank you. Picture. Oh, awards. Thank you. We'll switch them later. Again? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. So great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Yeah, I think it's wonderful what you're doing.